Octavian turned as purple as a Roman t-shirt. Jason gave Percy a fist bump. Even Raina managed to smile, though her eyes were stormy. We have to figure out who the extirpator problem is later, she said. Right now, we have more serious issues to deal with. I'll step aside for Jason, Percy said easily. It's no biggie. No biggie? Octavian choked. The Predaship of Rome is no biggie? Percy ignored him and turned to Jason. You're Thalia Grace's brother, huh? Wow, you guys look nothing alike. Yeah, I noticed, Jason said. Anyway, thanks for helping my camp while I was gone. You did an awesome job. Back at you, Percy said. Annabeth kicked his shin. She hated to interrupt a budding rope bromance, but Raina was right. They had serious things to discuss. We should talk about the Great Prophecy. It sounds like the Romans are aware of it, too. Raina nodded. We call it the Prophecy of the Seven. Octavian, you have it committed to memory? Of course, he said. But Raina... Recite it, please, in English, not Latin. Octavian sighed. Seven half-blood salt answer the call. To storm or fire, the world must fall. An oath to keep with final breath, Annabeth continued. And foes bear arms to the doors of death? Everyone stared at her, except for Leo, who had constructed a pinwheel out of aluminum foil taco wrappers and was sticking it into passing wind spirits. Annabeth wasn't sure why she blurted out the lines of the prophecy. She just felt compelled. The big kid, Frank, sat forward, staring at her in fascination, as if she'd grown a third eye. Is it true? You're a child of men. I mean, Athena? Yes, she said, suddenly feeling defensive. Why is that such a surprise? Octavian scoffed. If you're truly a child of the wisdom goddess... Enough, Raina snapped. Annabeth is what she says. She's here in peace. Besides... She gave Annabeth a look of grudging respect. Percy has spoken highly of you. In undertones, Raina's voice took Annabeth a moment to decipher. Percy looked down, suddenly interested in his cheeseburger. Annabeth's face felt hot. Oh, gods. Raina had tried to make a move on Percy. That explained the tinge of bitterness, maybe even envy in her words. Percy had turned her down for Annabeth. At that moment, Annabeth forgave her ridiculous boyfriend for everything he'd done wrong. She wanted to throw her arms around him, but she commanded herself to stay cool. Uh, thanks, she told Raina. At any rate, some of the prophecies becoming clear. Foes burn arms to the doors of death, and that means Romans and Greeks. We have to combine forces to find those doors. Hazel, the girl with the cavalry helmet and the long curly hair, picked up something next to her plate. It looked like a large ruby, but before Annabeth could be sure, Hazel slipped it into the pocket of her denim shirt. My brother Nico went looking for the doors, she said. Wait, Annabeth said. Nico D'Angelo? He's your brother? Hazel nodded as if this were obvious. A dozen more questions crowded into Annabeth's head, but it was already spinning like Leo's pinwheel. She decided to let the matter go. Okay, you were saying? He's disappeared. Hazel moistened her lips. I'm afraid. I'm not sure, but I think something's happened to him. We'll look for him, Percy promised. We have to find the doors of death anyway. Thanatos told us we'd find the answers in Rome. Like, the original Rome? That's on the way to Greece, right? Thanatos told you this? Annabeth tried to wrap her head around that idea. The death god? She'd met many gods. She'd even been to the underworld. But Percy's story about freeing the incantation of death itself really creeped her out. Percy took a bite of his burger. Now that death is free, monsters will disintegrate and return to Tartarus again, like they used to. But as long as the doors of death are open, they'll just keep coming back. Piper twisted the feather in her hair. Like water leaking through a dam? She suggested. Yeah, Percy smiled. We got a dam hole. What? Piper asked. <laughs> Nothing, he said. Inside joke. The point is, we'll have to find the doors and close them before we can head to Greece. It's the only way we'll stand a chance of defeating the giants and making sure they stay defeated. Raina plucked an apple from a passing fruit tray. She turned it in her fingers, studying the dark red surface. You propose an expedition to Greece in your warship? You do realize that the ancient lands, the Mar Nostrum, are dangerous? Marry who? Mar Nostrum. Jason explained. Arcee, 
It's what the ancient Romans called the Mediterranean. Raina nodded. The territory that was once the Roman Empire is not only the birthplace of the gods, it's also the ancestral home of the monsters, titans and giants, and worse things, as dangerous as to travel for demigods as it is here in America. There, it would be ten times worse.